Hello, my name is Kirsten McKnight. My name is Keith. Hi, my name is Kaya Barrett. Hi, my name is Nia Moore. Hi, my name is Zach Rambo. Well, my name is Jake Goldman. I have lived in the Park Heights community for at least eight years. And some communities go from good to bad, from bad to better, from better to worse. I think the history of this area um, has been sort of set in stone and has been going on for a very, very long time. One thing I love about the community is um, the older persons that live, they generally want to see the best for the community. And so I still think there's a sense of um, fellowship with everyone. It's a melting pot. In this area, we have the Fall Staff Improvement Association Incorporated, which is great at trying to keep the area strong. I can tell you that the neighborhood has just exploded over the last dozen years or so. And in this Fall Staff area, we have kind of like our own United Nations. We have people from, you name it, and we have it. And, it, and it's working. You can take the Orthodox community and you can put them in the middle of any neighborhood and they would still pretty much keep to themselves. And then you have the African American community that has also been here for quite a long time. And I think that there is um, a real divide between the two. It's tough because People will look at you and they'll ask you what your religion is and you'll say, I'm Jewish. Well, like, they're like, you're Jewish, but you're black. I think people just don't have the interest to go outside of their own little interest groups. People, when you live with people just like you all of the time, you don't get to know anything about anyone else. African American and Jewish communities have always been together to some degree. Uh, both groups have been persecuted at some point, and they've both been enslaved. My parents are Holocaust survivors, and I always tell people who I meet out and about, I say, whoever's coming to kill me because I'm Jewish, if you're black, you're next in line. And whoever's coming to kill you because you're black, I'm Jewish, I'm next in line. So we got to stand together. My whole congregation is black, predominantly African American. I have to like explain to people what it is we do and how we're not so much different from all other Jews. And we have similarities, large families, mother figures are important, you know, faith is important. So I just don't get the whole, the whole race thing. I've seen you hang on the corners more than ever before. Um, just walking up and down the street like with no concern, uh, not sure which or what they're planning on doing, looking like they're trying to do something but you really can't tell. One time, looking out my window, I saw a young man that had uh, a red bandana hanging from, his, hanging from his back pocket. And I don't know that much about gangs, but I kind of did find out from watching the news that that was one of the signs that he may have been in the gang. And you know, he stopped somewhere near our house and I remember, you know, there were some young men that were hanging out across the street from us that uh, were doing all the different things with their hands and all that type of stuff. So we went to a community meeting, and at the community meeting, they, you know, they, they started to inform us about what type of gang, gang activity was starting to come about in the community. So we asked them what we could do in order to prevent this from becoming more widespread. And yes, it did affect my children in a way that you know, I didn't want my children to be outside in the front where they like to play with their friends. You know, we had to have them come in the backyard. Um, I was afraid to step away from watching my children from any, for any length of time, fear that, you know, whatever these gentlemen were doing out front would directly, you know, c cause them some type of physical harm. So you know, we started uh, about a year ago, uh, immediate response to anti-crime unit for this area mm -hmm. that myself and a bunch of guys do. We have like 20 members. 
and we work very closely with Baltimore City Police and we respond to uh, calls you know involving crimes you know once you hit Northern Parkway it it it, dra it, turn, it take, takes a real drastic turn um, that's what we're trying to maintain we're trying to maintain the calm we're trying to maintain the you know give the message you know bad guy you cannot come into our community and do what you want because when you do we're going to be in your face my understanding is a lot of gangs are really crossing racial divides so I think you can go into any neighborhood in any community and I think that you're going to find gangs based not only on race, but also based on friendships. They're drawn to it because people from broken homes feel like it's a, like it's a family and they feel safe. Every kid needs the same thing. Every kid needs to know that they've got an adult in their life that cares about them. Every teenager needs to have a good time, a safe time. They need a social network. They need to be able to have friends who are similar to them, to hang out with, have a good time, grow together. Be able to build more community centers or after school activities that will be help children out because you got really a lot of good youth out there. I don't look at kids, no matter how old they are, and what they do if they get involved with a gang as being a bad kid because every kid is looking for something to belong to.